this regime will be firm, humane, and decisive. We will not condone nor tolerate any act of indiscipline. Any attempt to test our will will be decisively dealt with. For the international community, we add that you suspend judgment while we grapple with the onerous task of nation building. For some people, General Sani Abacha was a brutal dictator. But for others, he was a good man who could not hurt a fly. The description of Abacha thus depended largely on how people met him and on what he meant for them or what he did for them or what he did to them. In this episode, we are discussing the brutal side of Sane Abacha. We have also discussed this good side in the next video. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Abacha was Nigeria's seventh military head of state. He took over the reins of power from Ernest Shenekon in a palace school in 1993 and went on to rule the country with zero tolerance to opposition till June 1998 when he died in office. He is viewed by many as Nigeria's real dictator since independence. He was a no-nonsense ruler. He was not given to smiles. He wore dark goggles in most of his public outings and in it, his intentions were perfectly buried. Not many people could read his mind. Even the people close to him could hardly read him. He was ruthless and took drastic actions whenever he felt like doing so. The first action Abacha took upon taking over the reins of power was to suspend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria with immediate effect. This was done in his first broadcast to the nation. By this suspension, every democratic principle was suspended. Fundamental rights principles such as the rights to freedom of speech, freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, and many other rights were suspended. Citizens could thus be arrested arbitrarily and detained for weeks, months, and years without trial and without the grant of bail. Moreover, still in the first broadcast of General Sane Abacha, all executive offices in all the states of the Federation were suspended with immediate effect. In other words, all saving governors were sacked together with their deputies. The houses of assembly in all the states of the Federation were suspended and disbanded with immediate effect. All local government councils in the entire Federation of Nigeria were disbanded. Democracy was completely removed from the country and military rule was fully enthroned. In the course of Abacha's tenure, M.K. Abiola returned from exile and held a press conference in Lagos where he declared himself as the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Nigeria. He declared a government of national unity throughout Nigeria and reconvened the National Assembly that was suspended by Abacha. He reinstated all dismissed governors and reconstituted the houses of assemblies of all the states of the Federation. Abacha did not take this lightly. He was extremely angry. He immediately declared Abiola wanted and ordered for his arrest and detention. Abiola was arrested and detained for four years and all entreaties to have him released were rejected by Abacha. Diplomats from several countries of the world pleaded to no avail. The then Catholic pontiff, Pope John Paul II, came to Nigeria on a religious diplomatic visit and used the opportunity to plead with Abacha to release M. K. Abiola. Still, Abacha did not release him from custody. Abiola later died in the said custody. Also, during Abacha's tenure, a renowned environmentalist, Ken Sarawiwa, from the Ogoni area of River State, 
intensified his campaign for the protection of the Niger Delta environment and also intensified his campaign for the betterment of the lives and living conditions of the people of the Niger Delta region. His agitation did not go down well with the Abacha regime. By what many have described as a strange coincidence, some traditional rulers in the area were killed for acting as saboteurs to the progress of the area. Abacha immediately sent soldiers to arrest Ken Sarawiwa and eight others, and a tribunal was set up to try them for murder. Justice Ibrahim Auta was appointed to head the tribunal, while J.B. Daudu was returned as the federal government's prosecutor. In no time, the Ogoni Nine were found guilty and sentenced to death by the tribunal. Abacha did not waste time in signing the death warrant for the execution. All entreaties from the international community and from within Nigeria fell on deaf ears. The Ogoni Nine were executed. Their execution was a shocking and brutal reality, but Abacha moved on, undaunted. On July 5, 1994, the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Lupeng, and the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association, Pengasan, began the longest strike in Nigeria's history. In protest over the annulment of the June 12th election, the nation was plunged into a monumental fuel crisis. On August 18, Abacha responded fiercely to the strike by sacking the Executive Council of Nupeng and Pengasan, together with the leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress. On the same August 18, 1994, Abacha expressed displeasure over the way the leading newspapers in the country carried out a reportage of events in the country. Abacha then announced the immediate closure of all media houses owned by Punch, Concord, which was owned by Abiola, and the Guardian newspaper. Soldiers were deployed to enforce the closure. The closure was to immediate effect and lasted for a long time. Abacha was also unsparing when it comes to arrest and detention of perceived opponents. In August 1994, Abacha ordered the arrest of Anthony Nahoro, elder statesman and mover of the historic motion for Nigeria's independence from Britain. He was arrested at Sheraton Hotel and Towers. Also arrested were Chief Cornelis Adebayo and General Alani Akin Rinade. They were all detained for several months without trial. Alaji Balarebe Musa, former governor of Kaduna State, was also arrested together with other persons who were attending a meeting in his house in Kaduna. They were, however, later released. On 20th August 1994, Chief Frank Kukuri, the Secretary General of Nupeng, was also arrested. In October 1st, 1994, Abacha ordered for the arrest and detention of Chief Gane Fawemi, a popular Lagos lawyer. The reason for his arrest was that he launched a political party, the National Conscience Party in Lagos State, Nigeria. The attempt by Gane to take a step capable of bringing back democracy at the time did not go down well with Abacha. In November 1994, Professor Woleshio Inka fled Nigeria for reason of threat to his life. He alleged that his life had come under close monitoring by elements in the Abacha regime. On 28th February 1995, Abacha ordered the arrest and detention of General Lucio Gunobasenjo, General Lawan Guadabe, General Musa Yaradua, and others on allegation of co plotting. They were tried by a military tribunal and sentenced to death by firing squad. The military tribunal was headed by General Andrew Azazi. By providence, however, these persons were not executed. During Abacha's tenure, there were several bomb blasts in the country with scores of lives consumed. On 18th January 1996, there was a bomb blast at Doba Hotel, Kaduna, and one person was killed with scores injured. On January 19, 1996, there was a bomb blast at Aminokano 
airport, Kano. On February 3, 1996, a bomb exploded at the main police station in Zaria. On 13th April 1996, there was a bomb explosion at the Ikeja military cantonment. One person was killed and two others were injured. On 25th April 1996, bombs exploded at the Ikeja Air Force Base. In November 1996, a car bomb exploded at Motala Mohammed Airport and killed three persons including the chief security officer of the airport, Dr. Shola Omar Sola. The bomb explosions were endless and highly worrisome to Nigerians and foreigners in the country. It is not clear whether these blasts were sponsored by the regime or by persons who were determined to frustrate the regime. The other brutal side of Abacha was the dethronement of Alaji Ibrahim Dasuki from the stool of Sultan of Sokoto on grounds of insubordination and alleged poor leadership. This was done on 20th April 1996. Dasuki was immediately replaced with Alaji Mohamedou Masido. During Abacha's reign, the wife of Mk Abiola, Alaja Kudirat Abiola, was shot and killed by assassins on the streets of Lagos. This was on 4th June 1996. Her driver was also killed in the attack. Abacha immediately sent condolences to the family and blamed the assassination on terrorism. He placed a bounty of $45,000 for anyone who will help find the killers. Abacha also ordered the arrest of his erstwhile deputy, General Olade Bodia, and many others on allegation of coup plot. Among those arrested and detained were persons like General Adisa and General Olari Wajo. On 26 April 1998, these persons were found guilty and sentenced to death by a special military tribunal headed by General Victor Malo. Abacha was also seen as being brutal to the Commonwealth of Nigeria. Till date, huge sums of money are still being repatriated from abroad back to Nigeria in what is infamously referred to as the Abacha loot. On 8th day of June 1998, the unimaginable occurred. Abacha died in his guest house at Asurok Villa. His death came as a shock to the country and to the international community. He was succeeded by General Abdul Salami Abubakar, and one of the actions Abubakar took in his few days in office was the release of the persons that were detained by the Abacha administration, including those that were sentenced to death by the military tribunals. Abacha was a hard man in governance. He was a man of action and was not given to much talking. He had a good measure of high-handedness. He was feared by civilians and even feared by his colleagues in military uniforms. He is described by many as the real dictator of the Nigerian nation when compared to other military heads of state who were more flexible in governance. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to this channel for regular notifications.